Welcome back to the channel and today I have something that's a little bit more geared towards beginners. If you've never done like particle simulations with hair or cloth simulations, this is going to be a really fun tutorial because I'm going to show you step by step how you can make this goofy looking verbal simulation. I'll quickly turn off um, the hair particles just so you can see underneath that first of all what we're going to run is a cloth simulation for a little bouncy ball. And then on top of that, we're gonna throw this uh, really goofy, funny looking hair that just kind of flops around. So it's gonna be looking at hair dynamics a little bit. So if you wanna do this as a little bit of a beginner project, definitely keep watching. I'll show you step by step how to do this and render it out as a final animation. Okay, so we have a new scene open up in Blender. Let's select all the default objects and press delete. And then we're gonna go Shift A and under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a UV sphere. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in our front view, we're gonna go G, Z, and we can move this as high as you want really, but I'm gonna go about this high. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna to go to my mesh options again, I'm gonna add in a plane, tab into edit mode, and with everything active, go S8, and then press enter, and then tab back out. So why did I scale it in edit mode? Because I didn't wanna affect the transforms so um, it doesn't mess up the scaling. So now let's select our sphere. We're gonna right click and we're gonna to go to Shades Move. And if you wanna give this some cool physics, go over to your physics properties. And then you're gonna click on Cloth. We need to also tell it to interact with the surface here. So let's select this floor and let's give that a collision. Now let's click back on our cloth. And let's go down to the collisions and let's enable self collision. Essentially that's just gonna allow the cloth to interact with itself, not just the ground as well. So now if you go to frame one and you hit the space bar, you're gonna see a cloth simulation. How cool. But what we wanna do is we actually wanna go up to, um, let's go over to our pressure and enable pressure. And let's go ahead and give it a pressure of four. Now keep in mind, um, if this isn't gonna to be too deforming too much, we may be able in some cases to turn off the self collision and nothing will intersect with itself. So let's give that a shot. Let's go to frame one and let's hit the space bar. And now we can see um, it's not deforming enough for any faces to go through themselves. If we were to do a piece of cloth, and I'm just giving a quick example here. And I were to go ahead and run that, you can see in this case, if I didn't enable self collision, it all goes through itself like that and you have all of these intersecting faces. But because we have a ball here that's kind of under pressure, the tension's kind of keeping all the faces apart. Okay, so now we have a nice looking um, bouncing ball simulation. And now what we can do is we can go over to our particles. We can click here on the plus and we can make it hair. Now it's important that we come over here to the source and go use modifier stack. And let's come here and bring that hair length down and then if you want the dynamics, you have to click on hair dynamics. Now, if you go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna have the hair actually falling. But you can see that the hair is going through the ball surface here. So just like we did with the floor, we need to go here and we need to add a collision to our ball. Go over to modifier stack and make sure that the collision is sitting above the particle system over here, but underneath the cloth. That's really important. Then go back to your particles and let's go down here to render and let's enable B spline. So that's gonna give us more segments and let's bump it up to four. And we wanna actually go into our viewport and let's bump up the strand segments. Just so it looks a bit better in the viewport, but we won't take it all the way to four. Okay, so now let's also go up to our number over here and let's make it 500 um, particles. Go back to frame one. And the reason we're doing that is because each one of these, what essentially what this number is, it gives us these particles. They're the parent particles. So when we go down to this option here called children and we click on interpolate it, it's gonna generate the amounts you see here. So in the display, as you're seeing it, for every one of these 500 parent particles, it's generating 10 this on the display amount. Now the amount you see over here is actually the render amount and we're gonna set that to 70. Okay, so now we have a nice looking furball. But let's now go down to our clumping and let's click on the use clump curve. And now we can use this. Let's grab this little um, end bit here, drag that down. Let's click to add a point in the middle and drag that up. And now what we're doing is we're adding this nice curve to all of this. So it's kind of clumping together on the ends and it just kind of makes those a really kind of cool effect. 
So I might bring this down and a little bit, maybe even bring this down more, make it a little bit more pointy, maybe not quite that much. And that clumping really adds a cool effect. So I'm going to leave it at that. So now let's go over and cache this. So we're going to go over to our cache. And for this example, let's make it 110 frames. And let's also come here to our cache and make it 110. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button here called bake. And now it's going to bake this all into our blend file. Okay, it's now done baking. So if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar. Now you can see we have this really cool looking furball simulation. If you want to change anything, you have to delete the bake, change your settings again, and then rebake it. But now we have it. So let's now go in our front view and go shift A. Let's add in a camera and let's go to our right view and go G and move it forward. And let's press zero to go into our camera view and let's pose it like this. Let's enable the auto keying and come to frame one. And on frame one, we're going to go R, X and rotate it up. So it's looking at our ball. And then we're going to drag through the animation and then we're going to go R, X little by little. And it's automatically going to add in the keyframe. So let's come up to about 50, close to there and go R, X, bring it down here. Just follow the um, falling of the ball like this. And here you can see it falls like that. So I'm going to just leave it there. Turn off the auto king. Let's select our floor and in edit mode, let's grab these two verts and go E to extrude and Z. Bring it up and let's select this vertex and this vertex by holding and shift. Then go control B and drag this with your mouse and then roll your middle mouse button for more segments. Then left click, tab back out, right click and then go shade smooth. And then in edit mode, this is what we should see. So now let's go over to our render settings. Let's change it to cycles and let's make the device GPU. Now you may not have a GPU, in which case you'll just leave it at CPU. And then under your render settings, you're going to make it 45, which should be more than enough, especially if you have denoising enabled. Then you're going to go control B and drag over your camera to limit the rendering to the camera. Now, if we go Z and we go rendered, we can go shift A. We can add in a area light under the lights. G to move it to the side, R to rotate. Then go to your light settings and let's give it a strength of 450 and let's increase the size. Now I'm going to just move it out a little bit like so to the side and I'm going to go shift D to duplicate it. R to rotate one in, shift D to duplicate, rotate another one facing in. And now we have it lit like this. Pretty cool. So now what you can do is you can select your ball. You can go to your material properties, go new, let's call it fur. And let's just go ahead and give it a color. I'm going to go with a nice orange yellow. And then I'm going to grab my background and I'm going to go new. And I'm just going to give it a nice kind of light blue. And now if you go Z and you go rendered, this is what you're going to see. Something like that. Pretty cool. Okay. But our hair here can look a little bit better. So let's select our hair. Let's just quickly go to our particles. And we're going to go down to something here called the shape. So let's just find it. Hair shape. And under the hair shape, let's take the root diameter down to 0.4. And now if you go um, Z and you go rendered, it's going to look a lot finer. But to really see what this is going to look like, um, let's just first of all make sure to save it. I'm saving mine to my desktop. I'm going to duplicate the light one more time, just for a bit of extra backlighting. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to get a shot that we like. So I'm going to have it as it's just falling here like that. And then I'm going to go render and render the image. And here we have a really nice looking furball. Now, if you want to render this out as an animation, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to your output settings, click on this little folder down here on the output, select somewhere like your desktop, and then you can change the file format to a um, FFmpeg video. Under your encoding, you can change the container and I recommend you go with an MP4. That's what I'm going to go with. And now you can go render and you can render this as an animation. It'll take a little bit, about an hour or so on average, but it should render it out nicely. And then you have a nice hairball looking simulation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and check out some of my other tutorials. This was more of a beginner tutorial. I do a lot more advanced things in Blender, including character creation, sculpting, animation, all sorts of things. So check it out on my channel and I'll see you guys next time.